Hello there. See, I, I did the thing. I'm back with another review, and this one is a big one. But before we get into this, we're gonna go back in time for a minute. The day is October 30th, 2012. My dad calls 10 year old me into the living room and before my eyes I see on the TV that Disney has acquired Lucasfilm and that they will continue making Star Wars content. And the second they said that, my first thought was Kenobi. Give me an Obi-Wan Kenobi movie. I also make episode 7, but really just give me Obi-Wan Kenobi. Fast forward to almost 10 years and here we are. We finally made it, we finally got Kenobi. And was waiting almost a decade worth it? Yeah, I say so. This this was pretty solid. Most of you who watch these videos know me in real life. But if you didn't know, my favorite form of fiction ever is Star Wars. There is no doubt in my mind about that. I think about it every day. I think about it before I fall asleep. My opinions on certain movies in the franchise change every day. I daydream talking about it. Making fan films. Meeting the creators. I think about making videos on them every day. But at the end of the day, no matter the quality of a Star Wars thing I just watched, it is still magical to me. No matter how much I do not like a movie, I still like things about it. But that's for a separate video, or multiple, but today we are going to talk about Kenobi. Spoiler free at the start, but as long as you leave a like and hit the subscribe button, of course. First of all, Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen are bad. This is set 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. Obi-Wan is down on his luck and really just hates everything. He has disconnected himself from the Force, but no one seems to be bitching about it this time. He lives in a cave with a box of scraps! And he's just living his day-to-day -day life trying to survive and hide. Obi-Wan is given a mission that he does not really want to do because it might take him away from Luke. And all while that's going on, Vader is still out there and the third sister, also known as Reva, is tracking him down. But let's face it, Obi-Wan can't turn down from a little bit of fun adventure. After being on Tatooine for four minutes, I would want to leave as well. Also, he did like this and loved it, so of course he's going to leave. What I like about this show is obviously the cast and the little story that it has. I feel like the cast is trying their hardest to make this as good as possible. Obi-Wan, Reva, and Vader are all fantastic, but some little characters stand out as well. I'm gonna mispronounce this, but Camille Nanjiani has a fun little role that I think is just really interesting and unique for a Star Wars universe. I really enjoyed his little inclusion in what his character did. He wasn't always that funny, but that's most Disney, Marvel, Star Wars comedy for you. Little Luke and Leia are in this, and for kid actors, they are very, very good. Leia is also definitely a standout as well. She actually plays a pretty big role in this. The Great Inquisitor is also great, and I wish we got a little bit more from him. His introduction with the other Inquisitors was great, and it's nice to see him in a show that I actually like. Yeah, go ahead, leave your comments. When it comes to music, it was pretty good. Maestro John Williams and his perfectness did the theme, and Natalie Holt did a great job with the score. It's nice to see more female writers and film scores. Maybe it's my TV, but music can always be louder, and I've noticed that with a lot of Disney properties lately. Also, the music wasn't as iconic as that I'd hoped it to be. I don't need Duel of Fates every time there is a fight, but I think you get what I mean. Her score for Loki was way more iconic than this in my opinion. I think the show has fairly good tension and great moments that can be a little emotional to see. I wish they could have gone a bit further with both of those, but I will talk about that later. This show isn't perfect, I do have my nitpicks. First of all, I love Deborah Chow and her directing, but compared to the Mandalorian episodes that she did and her Better Call Saul episode, the series felt like it lacked her style. She doesn't have a ton, not enough to see her style, but it felt a little flatter, less stylized than her Mandalorian and Better Call Saul episodes. Also as a different cinematographer, which the cinematography is still good, but Greg Frazier has such a great eye that I wish this series had. Imagine if this show looked like Dune or the Batman. Hell, even Rogue One The Last Jedi have incredible cinematography. It's not bad in this series, I just wished it was a bit better. I guess that's my biggest complaint in this, it felt like it lacked creativity. This is a huge character. No one dislikes Obi-Wan or Ewan McGregor, and people finally love Hayden Christensen. I know Lucasfilm has like 40 shows in the works right now, but I feel like if you're gonna try harder on any one of them, this is the one. It kind of lacks some flavor that past Disney Star Wars properties have given us. It felt a little cheap sometimes. Again, I'm nitpicking. And this is Star Wars, we shouldn't take Space Wizards so seriously. I also feel that there should be a standard when it comes to this. I don't dislike the show, these are just comments, so quit your typing. Some of the line delivery can be a bit better. A lot of people shit on Moses Ingram, and sure, there are a few lines, but her character is basically the same as prequel Anakin, and people call her a bad character, but praise Anakin after hating on him for 20 years. Acting-wise, she's a really good actor at the start, and it gets way better towards the end. She really shines with her acting. Save for Obi-Wan, hell, Ewan McGregor has some lines that he delivers and I thought that could have been way better. So stop attacking Moses when your beloved Ewan had a couple of them too. God, I seriously f 
fucking Star Wars fans. The action and choreography is good. I do wish it was a little bit better, but I can't complain. The lightsaber stuff in Force is pretty good. Oh, they do more with the Force combat, which is exactly what I want. I want so much more Force combat, and they did it in the show, and I really liked it. Yeah, the Leia chase sequence doesn't really look that good, but just get over it. It's fine. Also, the volume is just an incredible piece of technology in filmmaking, and is for sure the future of filming, but... I think this show is starting to show its limitations. With the right framing and cinematography, you can see where it ends, but not really exactly. It's kind of like a painting, and like right before someone walks right into it, or they start walking from the volume, that's kind of what it's like. I think The Mandalorian utilizes the volume way better than this show did. Maybe not way better, it's not that obvious, but if you're really paying attention, then yeah, you'll start to notice it. One last thing, the planets. Come on, Disney, give me more interesting planets. This literally looks like you filmed this in California, like this episode of The Mandalorian. Hell, I bet you didn't even do that. You did it in the volume. You can do anything with the volume. Please, stop giving us these lame-ass planets. Again, that's just a little nitpick. It doesn't affect the story. That's just me personally. At the end of the day, it's Star Wars. No, this series is not perfect. I wanted a more Logan Styles Obi-Wan series, but I love the adventure and just fully enjoy seeing these characters that I grew up with come back after being harassed by horrible people and watch them be accepted and see love from the good fans. You can still love or hate the prequels and enjoy this. Although I wanted this to be my favorite thing from the Disney Star Wars stuff, it, it isn't, sadly. Maybe it will be when I rewatch it, but Disney has made some great Star Wars material. Leave your comments, and I'm going to have to give this series as a whole a skip to this time cut if you want to know. I'm going to do spoilers and then rate at the end, not to give it away, but it's a good score. I like this show. Okay, leave now. I'm going to talk about huge stuff and go more in depth. If you have not seen this, I seriously and highly recommend skipping the spoilers section. I'm serious. Okay, you had your chance. We're going to dig into spoilers right now. I didn't expect the show to be about how little Leia knows Obi-Wan, but I liked that a lot. I thought that plot line was good and kind of cute. At first, I thought it was only going to be like the first two to three episodes, but it wasn't, and I liked it. I think showing Order 66 is great as well. Even though I wanted a bit more, it was still nice that they acknowledged it and showed it, even though the timing pretty bad uh, due to the horrible tragedy that happened in Texas recently. I was extremely surprised that they didn't have an exclaimer at the start, but they did for the other episodes, which is good. Hayden Christensen being back for Vader was so good and utilized so well. I really loved the flashback. I'm glad we got one at the right time in the series and that they didn't do the whole series as a Clone Wars flashback, which is apparently what everybody wanted for some reason. I did want just a tiny bit more of Hayden out of the suit, whether it was Anakin or like in prosthetics, just anything. But I am glad that this was able to happen and come true before my eyes. Seeing him and Ewan took me back to being a little kid playing dress up all over again. I'm a little surprised that they brought him back and didn't shed that much of him out of the suit, but I respect the restraint. Sometimes less is more. Let's just talk about the fights too. Yeah, that last one was epic. I love the use of the force in these fights. I always wanted more force and we finally get it in all of these fights. Especially when we see how powerful Vader is with the ship. It was awesome. Yeah, it didn't look that good, but whatever. It was sick. Especially when he was like tearing it up. God, I, that's just what I want from Vader. Now when it comes to the first fight, I, I do like how it was Obi-Wan not being ready for the fight. Like when the lightsaber is ignited, it's not like a big heroic moment. He's like, oh, f bro, here we go. But I think it just felt so weird how he was just like, run past the mound of dirt. Like if it was a different, more claustrophobic setting, I think it would give more tension. I just thought it was really silly, kind of dumb. Also for the first fight, it wasn't that good of a fight. It kind of looked like it was shot like a fan film to me. Again, I, I, I'm nitpicking, but I have to be honest about my opinions. I am tired of people in Star Wars dying and coming back to life or surviving a lot. I knew Reva wasn't going to die, but if I was Vader, I would definitely not stab her once and then leave. I'd make sure that whoever betrayed my ass is beyond dead. Also knowing how Vader is, very surprised me that's all he did. I know it's it's because that's where the story needed to go to redeem her, but I just, I don't know. You, you showed us this. I, it wouldn't be that much different if he executed her. And if you really thought that Disney broke canon by killing the Grand Inquisitor, come on. Yeah, again, it's dumb that he survived, but you know, can't break canon because Rebels. I definitely like the Inquisitors. They seem more competent than they do in Rebels. And can I just say, thank God that they don't use their swords to fly in this series. God, the emotion was so good when Obi-Wan defeated Vader. I absolutely adored that. I wanted more of the show to kind of feel like that scene. Also, the feeling of terror. Like, right when Obi-Wan finds out that Anakin is alive, I love that moment of realization. And the dread in his eyes. I can't get over that final conversation Obi-Wan has with Anakin. I finally see the difference between Vader and Anakin. And Obi-Wan's reaction response to that was, like, perfect to me. Also, the voice going between the James Earl Jones voice and Hayden's, to the lighting, 
the music. It was all I wanted, and it almost got me to cry. I wish it did, but it, it almost did. I loved Obi-Wan's PTSD, but I do wish we saw more than him having, like, one nightmare and one vision of Anakin. Yeah, I get it, where he, where he constantly has this stuff, but I think showing us more of that could be a bit more effective. You can see that he's haunted, but it should be a bit more at the forefront and mess with his psyche a bit more, in my opinion. Fortress Inquisitorius is so cool. Yeah, I've, I've played the game, and it's a great game, but it's still cool. I still like it. I don't hate it anymore now that's in this show. I also really dug that it was kind of a tomb. I don't remember seeing that in the game, and I think that's f***ing awesome. I even dig this little sequence, and a lot of people are comparing it to this, but come on, please, just learn to like things even just a little bit, guys. Please. People are also bitching about Obi-Wan getting in and sneaking out with Leia in a trench coat, claiming the writers are lazy and don't know the material. My brother in Christ, have you seen the first Star Wars movie? They literally do this in that movie. I think the trench coat hiding is kind of cute and goofy. And yeah, Disney has made the Empire a little less intimidating since they've gotten it. But whatever, I'm already over it. You'll be okay. Man, those T-47s looked really bad. Also, why did they make it like a huge moment when one of them didn't make it? We didn't even know the guy's name until after we saw that scene. I kind of just laugh now looking back at it. Like they made this huge sad heroic moment we didn't even know this guy even existed up until that scene and we didn't even know his name oh shit. i forgot to mention vader toying with reba yeah raw as shit. no complaints there even the so-called reveal of the grand inquisitor was cool only the true fans saw that coming the same true fans that are trying to remake the last jedi you know true star wars fans not liberal soy boy beta cucks i'm wondering which audience is really going to take that seriously or not also, what happened to Vader wanting to torture Obi-Wan? At first, he like wanted to burn him and make him suffer, but after he covered him with rocks, he was just like, okie dokie. I mean, you couldn't wait there for more than like three hours. I mean, you were literally filleted and cooked extremely well done, and you're still here, so, you know. I think I would have waited a little bit longer. Oh yeah, Qui-Gon the Emperor showed up. I think it was really cool. And God, Liam Neeson looks the exact same as he does back then. I mean, it was filmed like when he was getting older, but Jesus, I mean, it looked like no time had passed. I love Ian McDermott. I'm so glad we got to see him more. And his makeup looked more like Return of the Jedi than Revenge of the Sith. That's it. That's all I got. That's just That's just something I noticed. That's your little bit of like trivia for today. Okay, we're right up with spoilers now. Before I give my ranking, I have one more thing to know. Disney's probably gonna make a season two of this, but after this big story with Vader of all characters, where do you go? If you go smaller, Star Wars fans will be outraged because they're the worst. And you can't do them all again after Rebels since that's canon. And a smaller story after you peaked isn't always so fun. So I don't know, I think leaving it as a limited series in my opinion is the best option. I'm really sorry I was really nitpicky in this video by the way. Like I've said, I've waited for almost a decade for this, I, I can't help it. At least I feel that I'm being somewhat reasonable. Some of the reasons that people are saying why they hate this show is truly baffling to me. But with that being said, Kenobi's gonna get an 8.5 out of 10 as a whole. I think if I rewatched it, it'll stay the same or jump up to a 9, but if I'm being honest, it's probably gonna stay the same. It's at a comfy 8.5. I just like Star Wars. Well, most of the time. Any hoosies, thank you for watching this video, everyone. What'd you think about Kenobi? Let me know down below. I'm always curious to hear how people disagree with me. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and bloody show a friend. Force them to watch my videos. It probably works half the time. Any of you guys, I'll catch you guys later. See ya.